everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're taking my Friday watercolor painting challenge, this is number two. And we're going to be painting this beautiful flower. It's a rose and granulating magenta. So I have my uh, A Gallo paint, my Tetorito brushes, and some 100% watercolor paper. 100% cotton watercolor paper, 140 pounds. Let's get started. So we're gonna do another challenge, and this one is for a rose. On my studio table, I actually have the Tintorito set that I just love. This is a size four retractable travel brush, a size six, a two zero quill, and this really, really cool zero, really, really long, well, it's uh, it's kind of like a striper brush, but it's got like a nice big belly. I haven't been able to find this brush in any other line at all. So let me know if you've ever seen one. I love this one and I'm actually thinking about getting it in some different sizes, but they're from Italy and I can honestly say I have so many brushes, right? I mean, you can see clearly over here, I have tons to choose from. But I keep reaching for these because I just love them. They're so nice to work with. In any case, let's get started on our rose. The color of choice today is going to be Quinn Magenta. And, um, you know, it's tempting to use Rose Matter because I have to love Rose Matter, right? But I got this Quinn Magenta from A Gallo that I'm really partial to. I've been so excited using some of their colors and um, they originally sent me a set of granulating colors uh, a few months ago and I actually reviewed all of them on my channel and I just love them. So let's talk about loading the brush a little bit because for my beginners here, loading the brush can be a little tricky. As you notice, I'm wetting my brush and this is the size four it's got it's a nice size quill it's like a round with a point and uh, the quill is wrapped you can see it's really really beautifully done it's got a nice size belly which holds a decent amount of water it is a synthetic brush so when you load the color um, it, it's going to suck up a lot of color you see how much color is there so it's got a lot of water and a lot of color. What I'm gonna look for in my first layer on this rose is just a little bit of a diluted version of that color. And we're going to do kind of a loose, like uh, star shape. This is the fun part. Just something very, very loose, very watered down. And uh, that is gonna represent the outer portion of our rose. So you wanna have like some points on it. Um, try and think of, if you have a rose picture, try and think of the just the outer shape of the rose and how it's shaped. There's a lot of angular, you'll notice, uh, there's a lot of angular pieces on the outside of a rose, you know? It's just very, very much not round. And uh, I think that's one thing to point out on the shapes is the fact that uh, on roses, they actually have a lot of these little, you know, areas. And then I'm touching some of the outer corners with my color just a little more than the rest. And we're gonna just let that bleed because we want variations in color on our flowers always. This is one thing I love about a gallo is <laughs> It's travel, it's just so beautiful. So whether you're taking, this is 100% cotton paper, whether you're taking um, your uh, rose to the next level with some granulating color, which this is actually a granulating magenta. You know, one thing about A Gallo, and, and I know you're gonna have questions about A Gallo, is that they only come in the half pans, but as you can see, they don't wear out quickly. They're so highly pigmented. I can just take a tiny little bit and bam, I got it. And you know, the best thing about that is you can actually just keep tapping on color to tint because the tinting strength 
is so powerful. They're handmade watercolors from Italy and I love them. So basically that's how I found out about these brushes is because one of the brushes came with the set so sometimes when you buy from them they will include a brush in some of these sets and they're just I can't say enough good things if you're looking to invest in your watercolor collector definitely definitely go with a gala you have to try them there's nothing like that that I've ever painted with I also love Roman Schmal too Roman Schmal has some really beautiful qualities in theirs and there are some uh, white knights that I've been reviewing on the channel a lot lately like the granulating ones in fact I have a whole granulating watercolor class available at JacquelineJacks.com that is just on granulation all right so what we've done here is we've created a base right this is like the first layer of petals or it could be more than one layer like this could be one down here and this could be the cross one right but we haven't really established anything yet and I'm kind of needing this to dry just a little bit because otherwise if it doesn't dry then what we'll end up with is uh, it will just keep bleeding and you won't see the division in layers so just to like speed this up I'm gonna take a little paper towel I don't love to do this, but I'm just gonna kind of blot it here. There we go. And that just dries me a little bit more. It's just what I need to do the next level. So again, taking, um, now I'm gonna take the two zero quill and we're gonna take a little more color, put it on our palette here I just have glass on my studio table makes it just easier for me right now and so that you can see it because my my palette is over here and you wouldn't be able to see it so I have this now loaded to my brush so the next layer of color is of course going to be twice the strength of this and to establish some of these um, some of these petals I just want to try if I can and build a line there and what that's going to do is as I start to go around the pet the uh, the flower it's actually going to hopefully not blend in too much so right now my brush is loaded with color but not a ton of water just what is in the brush is being held in the belly so it's delivering the color at a very very full strength and I'm just going through here and I'm adding these little swipes to develop some of the lower petals and here I'm just creating kind of like a shadow so just like that just going around and filling that in. Then we need that to dry a little bit more. Now I'm going to uh, add a little bit of water to my brush. And on this side here, I'm actually gonna build out the rose just a bit more. And it's gonna kind of be a little jagged, uneven shape. That's very, very organic. You notice I'm holding the brush right towards the end so that just like that and I'm leaving some white space and you can play with this play with the shapes you don't don't be afraid of the shapes but I always say watch the tutorials first before you go any further this one I'm gonna let go over a bit and cross there and so see how I'm adding a little more color right that baseline was a lot lighter and then we kind of lifted it a bit now on this shape we can actually lift a little bit whether you do it with your brush or you just take a, a piece of paper to kind of speed the drying I'm lifting a little bit of the color and leaving some so that way I kind of have a variety of different shades more quickly so that's a way that if you can't control the shades um, then you can do it that way now as this is still kind of wet 
I'm kind of adding a little bit of shades and shadows here. I'm going to go here and I'm just going to add a little strike there. And what that does is that creates a petal. See how that created a petal? So I actually have the petal here. And by adding a shadow there, that just dropped a petal down. So by adding shadows and like lights and darks in the same color, you can see how now that flat shape is now getting dimensions. So now as we go into the center, I'm gonna just kind of speed dry this a little bit more so that we can get that quality, get a little bit stronger color. And at this point, if you wanted to add like another color, like I've got some uh, Imperial Purple here on my table, I can actually get that onto my brush. And let's create the interior shape. So the interior shape is just gonna be like a little C curve, like that. And then we can put another so what I'm thinking of is I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do the shadows and leave the, the lighter space as the actual uh, top part of my petals. And by kind of negative painting in um, around this shape, now I am forming the shape of the rose. And because I'm using a little bit of Imperial Purple mixed into my magenta, what it's doing is it's just giving me that ability to make that center stand out a little more just by tinting my uh, original magenta. And that's something I do a lot, uh, just slightly tinting some areas in a shade of the magenta or whatever I'm using you know and that means like I'll add a little blue to it or you know whatever color is coordinating so that it doesn't really look like I've changed colors it just looks like I've added you know something for a shadow and it's always I always say it's the darks that make the lights stand out so when I'm doing this and kind of just you know going through and like I kind of like this here it kind of looks like it could be a petal so if I outline it you see what I mean see what that happens and then if I just go here a little bit and create more of a shadow it just makes that top petal stand out and look really really pretty um, right here let's let's go and fill out that shape a little bit more like that so it's got a little shadow and then here I can put a little shadow right to highlight that light part. And again, I'm just, roses are a little easier than you think because there is no real set shape to them. It's just basically uh, lights and darks, you know? So if I go here, I can create another petal that's sitting on top of these petals. And I think I'm gonna actually extend that out just a bit. Isn't this great? So now if you if you stand back and you see any area a little bit too dark and the dry shift, you're not really sure if it's gonna work out, then just do that. Now we're gonna go back to our magenta and make our mix just a little more magenta, very light. And one thing good about this particular paint is it layers well. So I'm pretty much done here. I'm just gonna look at any petals that maybe could be enhanced, like this area here. Um, I feel like I could just kind of add a little more to it. And I like the way this is coming out, but I think I actually want this to come out just a bit more and this to come out a bit more just on an angle, just to fill that side out a bit and make it a little fuller rose. Uh, same thing maybe over here. I really love this area, so I'm not gonna touch it. I'm actually just gonna accent it with a bit of a shadow just to see what that looks like. And this is completely trial and error. I have never done this particular rose before I've never done this shape before. I'm just kind of going with the flow and seeing, you know, and standing back and just assessing as I go. And 
Yeah, and I like that. So now the center is very, very white, and I didn't leave a lot of other whites here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a very lightly tinted uh, version of this color just over it, just like that. So I'm still leaving some white space, right? I'm still leaving some white, but I'm just kind of tinting the center just so that it doesn't punch out too much. So I really love this. Now it's gotta dry and then we'll see what the dry shift is. And if I feel like the dry shift is just too light, then all you do is you go back and just stand back from your, from your piece and maybe just add another little glaze. And this is what we call glazing. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Just a little glaze. Um, and this area is really, really light now compared to, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit. But again, I don't wanna take away all my contrast. I like this. Now, just to show you that uh, you can lift color while it's wet, if you add a little bit of water to anything, it will blend it out on 100% cotton paper, but then you can also actually lift that back even more. And again, cotton paper loves to just keep working for you. It likes to keep blending a really good watercolor. So if you wanna get some additional lights and darks, you can pull back things with a tissue just like that. So now we're just gonna let this dry, and while it dries, we're just gonna add a stem. So let's get my brush out of water. Clean this off really well. And I have a little bit of, on my studio palette here, I have a little bit of uh, White Nights Green Shadows. And I just love this. It is beautiful. So putting it on the, the Zero brush, that long, beautiful, like a striper brush, and what we're gonna do is we're just going to connect a beautiful, gentle, a little more, a beautiful, gentle stem, so elegant, and then just bring it down. And you notice that as I curve, it gives me some uh, different strength weights on my watercolor and then you can actually just tap it in this is actually a great brush if if you have a shaky hand you don't necessarily need to have a perfect hand to use this brush i find that it's very forgiving <laughs> and i'm gonna take one up here and we're gonna come off with setting the brush down a little bit and just give it a little wiggle for one of the petals and then here again another petal um, down here I probably yeah I need a thicker brush for the petals otherwise I'm gonna have to make several passes so let's switch brushes and get something easy so this is a good one for the 2.0 quill and I'm just gonna lay this down so I want a tip on my rose petal and I'm just gonna kind of squish it and lift and then roses have those little jagged edges on their petals so we're just gonna use the beautiful tip of this brush to give us some of those little sharp edges. Isn't that a gorgeous watercolor? I have found so many great ones. This is one that I paint with in the granulating class. And I gotta say, I just love it. So we're gonna lay this down again. Look at that. What a great starting shape for. Isn't that just perfect? We can come down and even make it a little more pointy. And I'm gonna add a little more color up here. This is a different shape because we're looking at a different perspective 
of those petals up there. And then here I'm just gonna add a little more color because I like having a little variety. Okay. So now let's rinse out this brush and we're just gonna go back to that magenta and a little bit of my purple and we're just gonna lay in a little bud, just like that. You can add a little more color and just shape it out a little bit. Look at that. And we're done. All right, take the challenge, everyone. So go off and make yourself a beautiful rose. There's so many shapes. Now remember, if you want something a little more pronounced in the center, all you have to do is just add a little bit of a shadow. Um, and as this dries, you literally can just give it a little more shadow here. And it will help the lights really stand out. It's all about just having those little shapes, especially in your center, that lead the eye around it. And it's always, I always love to kind of fudge with it a little bit at the very end after things have dried because the dry shifts, you know, they, they, will, they will change and it's not really controllable in watercolor. So for those of you uh, that also might be having a little trouble with your brushes or maybe how to load your brush. Um, let me just show you. So if your brush has a nice size belly on it, obviously it is gonna hold a whole lot of water. So when you put it in the water, originally it's gonna have a ton of water on it, right? If you feel that um, when you dip it in your color, get a little sample and keep these on hand and this is too wet then you would just dry off a little bit of the belly right and then you'll have see how it just pulls that water right out you'll have the ability to do dry brushing you can also reload it with the color just by picking color up and then you've got your color back again but as the brush depending on what brush you use as your brush gets more dry and water comes out of it it will go to that dry brush effect so it depends if you want a dry brush effect then you want less you want a big belly brush but you want less water in the brush and it's very very easy to control it i like the big belly brushes because i can load them with water really quickly uh, just like that and i can take the water out just by tapping the belly onto paper and I immediately go to that dry brush effect. So um, as far as being able to control water, that's one easy, easy way to do it is just with a cloth, you know, you just tap and you end up clearing the brush so, so, so quickly. Always store your brushes after you wash them, after you're finished upside down, just like this. I just hang them on this thing. I'll show you a good way to do it is uh, on my brush thing here I actually just put them just like that and that way they hang upside down when I'm finished always have a dirty water and a clean water on hand and um, this is just a little holder that I got you can actually use a rock which I get from the garden all the time and um, I just <laughs> I use them because they're so pretty you know what I mean so as far as my setup here very very easy I think a lot of the struggle is with paper so this is a hundred percent cotton paper this one actually that I'm using here is from Paul Rubens so it they come in these really really big sheets of 15 inches by 10 inches the paper is highly absorbent so it's a little bit of a different feel than the Fabriano so the Fabriano is what we made the granulating watercolor class um, accordion sketchbook out of, and I love this paper. It's very, very similar to the Paul Rubens. However, the difference is 
is there's a little more sizing on the sheets. So I feel like the, the watercolor can be blended a little better, but at the same time, it's just the dry time on this one. This one has like less sizing or something on the sheet, so it's very soft. And as a result, it does blend things really, really well. I actually uh, did this one already for the uh, spontaneous watercolor class and these on uh, the same paper on the Paul Rubens. So it's a, it's a good option depending on where you are, you know? I really love the uh, Artistico 100% Cotton Fabriano. I think this is the next best thing to arches. And I find that I can get these here at $19, uh, around $20 for 20 pages in a block. And the block's real easy to use. I also can get that exact same paper um, on order from the art store for just uh, eight dollars for a huge sheet and eight dollars that eight dollars made this entire 30 page accordion sketchbook which I actually teach you how to do with no glue no tape no no nothing um, in the granulating watercolor class all right I hope you're enjoying yourself and give this a try don't forget to share it on our Facebook group so I can see how you're doing with your roses. And again, this was a granulating version. If you don't want the granulation and you want something more transparent, then use non-granulating colors. Either way, use something you love and happy painting.